Hey, Time Slicers, welcome to Slice Squad Spills. I'm your host, Nikki Wildflower. I went from a basement apartment to a multiple seven-figure empire. Now I'm here to share how you can do it too. All right, welcome. We have like so much to talk about today because we skipped last week. We didn't skip last week to you guys, but we skipped last week to us because we were mentally ill. <laughs> what? We were mentally ill last week, both of we us. We were not doing very well. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, we were, like, I mean, I'm always mentally ill, but it really just had gotten the best of me. And we were like, let's just not, okay? Uh, you know, not going to show up as the best version of myself. Luckily for me, like anyway having the tools that I have now, like those, those days don't, they just come for like a day and then they go away. It used to be like months long of an issue. Yeah. We were on, we always do a meeting, um, every week, right before we film. And we, we like started the meeting off both just so mad, I feel like. And I'm like, are we still doing the podcast today? You're like, yeah. And then by the end of the call, I'm like, can we not do the podcast? today? Yeah. And it's not that we don't love you guys. It's just that we always want to show up as the best version of ourselves. And we weren't that. So some really exciting things before we actually like get started with the bulk of the podcast, I want to say a couple of things. So you all know how excited we've been about slice strands and the seven minute per row extension line. We have a big in-person certification coming up and that is going to be February 6th and 7th. And you're going to get to spend two days with us and we are going to teach you all the things and tell you all about the extension line and you're going to do some hands on and we're going to practice looping and relooping and um, we're going to do some breath. We're going to have some breath work opportunities and dancing and it's going to there's going to be inner work and there's going to you're going to learn all the things extensions how to transform your career with them. I'm so excited. Our in person events are like. The Nobody best. does it like we do it. It's no. like the full heart is poured into it. And it's always, for me, like a life-changing experience, even though I hate hosting in person. I hate the idea of it. I just like being there, you know? Like, I'm like, please don't even talk to me about this until it's like the day of. Otherwise, I'm going to be a ball of stress. But we're really excited about that. And we're also really excited. I know that we talked a little bit about SEA, which is our- Wait. Ser- you didn't say where it is. It's in my oh, city, baby. It's shoot. in Denver, Colorado. It's in Denver, Colorado. The <laughs> class is in Denver, Colorado. Can I say it like that? Um, I guess. <laughs> no, I won't. I don't, I don't like it either. It's not working for me. So um, it's in Denver. Really excited about it. For those of you that don't know, I used to live there for like seven years. This bitch and I decides. Really live here. And then I'm like, let me move back to New York. And then this little mother effa is like, you know what? Now that you're back in New York, I'm thinking, you know where I have this groundbreaking idea. I'm going to move to Colorado. Have you ever heard of it? And I'm like, you know what? Fuck you, Jackie. I think it would be, I think we'd be too powerful if we lived in the same state. (laughs) We've always lived in different states pretty much like for our entire adult lives. Yeah, we have. I moved out when I was 18. I like, I just dipped. Yeah. And I was not an adult. I was a baby. No, you were 12. No. It wasn't. You were literally yeah. 12. Oh, I was 12. I'm like, no, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. I wasn't Straight 12. <laughs> that baby sister syndrome so hard over there. I have it so bad. Like, like don't I ever call me cute. I literally, Jackie moved into a new house, which congratulations, by the way. Thank you. And we, I swear we're going to get into the topic, but you know, it, it all just ends up as like a hodgepodge anyway. So Jackie moves into the house and I'm like, oh my gosh, love it. And she sends me the decor. I was like, it's so cute. Love it. I use cute to describe like a lot of things. And she writes back. She's like, so I don't like the use of that word. I'm like, I have to let you know that cute is a no for me. And I'm like, okay, it's so chic, Jackie. Like, what do you want me to say? I, I like I, it. I, to be honest. So I wrote like, in the message, I wrote like hashtag youngest child syndrome. But for me, there are so many amazing words that you can use to describe a person or like not a baby, at least, like not a baby pet or a baby human, but like a human being and like the things around you, like exquisite, beautiful, excellent. There are all of these amazing <laughs> words. I apologize that my vocabulary is not extensive enough for your liking, but cute is a perfectly fine word to describe decor. You have a yellow fucking couch. What do you want me to, what? It's not cute. It's green. I'm sorry. My couch is yellow in my studio. I have yellow and green. Oh, okay. My couch is yellow in my studio, which by the way, if you haven't seen my studio, it's adorable. I I haven't really seen it. I've just seen pictures. It's, it's But what's wrong with that? 
Uh, listen, it's just a me thing. It's this not you. This it's is me. clearly a, you. You talk to your own therapist about this. This is I, not a me. This is not. And a me I issue. have. And I will. wait. Um, also, I cut you off to let everyone know that the event was in Denver, but you were about to talk about SEA, I think. And I would love to have a brief celebration of it. So we also want to talk about SEA. So you all already know, I would hope at this point that we have Slice Squad Consulting, um, which we traditionally work with hairstylists and we slice their timing, double their income. That, that's what we do. Not just through the hair stuff, but through efficiency in general, in their entire business, which is the subject of today. Efficiency, not just in hair, but setting yourself up on a daily basis to be a productivity machine, even if that's not in your inner being to be that way. And why it's going to actually make you less stressed and make your life easier. All of the things that we teach outside of the technique apply to every other service industry as well. And Jackie is a massage therapist and has used these this blueprint in her own business and had astounding results with it. Naturally, it made sense for us to also, because we also always were having people reach out from different industries, like, you know, I'm an esthetician or I am a massage therapist, but I really resonate with everything you say. Can you help me? And it was always like, yeah, I mean, we can help you. We just don't have anything formally set up yet. And now we do. So we have Service Evolution Academy. Brilliant. Love it. It's, it's live, your baby. You're going to learn inner work and mindset boundaries. Um, and I want to say this because I feel like in other industries, sometimes the inner work stuff can get like super, super woo woo. And there's nothing against that. I think there's space for that as well. I would say what we drop is a little bit more practical knowledge in inner work, like you know, mindset, um, centering yourself, boundaries in your business, that sort of inner work, right? There's a little, I mean, I'm a little woo-woo, but, you know, that's kind of the direction we go there. So we do inner work because that's really the the place to start in any, in any business, right? It's really important to be self-aware as you're trying to grow. And then the other things that we focus on in our modules are um, business and marketing mastery, mastery, you heard it right, um, and then client retention, bringing in your ideal clients and then retaining them as well. We're very excited about SEA. We've already got our first few clients enrolled. Yeah, just super stoked to life hack with a bunch of other people in different service industries because we're all about efficiency, like across the board. And yes. that's what we'll talk about today. Definitely. With that being said, like we really wanted to take a little bit of time today to talk about the things that we have done to set ourselves up for success. And like, what does efficiency even mean when it's not necessarily linked to hair? And how does that actually like affect your business and your life in a positive way? Because I don't want people to think that what we mean by efficiency is that we're just like speeding through life and not like taking it in and enjoying it. No, it's like there are when it comes to running a business. When it comes to our work life, there are things that we do that are really tedious that we should be doing because they help grow our business. They can be a little bit time consuming, but how can we like make them take up less time? So I want to tell you like I, this is something that I'm geeked over. Like I obsess over stuff like this. I, I think I'm, I'm an efficiency machine. At least that's my goal. So I even told Jackie before this, I was like, I want, I just want you to know that I made 23 social media posts this morning in an hour. That is absolute insanity to me. Yeah, I'm a machine. And I use machines to help me. And we're going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a machine who uses other robot machines to be the most efficient person on the planet. Well, I'm working on it. That's that's my goal um, because I want to be able to have like 50 hours worth of output in like the shortest amount of time possible, both behind the chair and in business in general. So here, here are the things that I do. First of all, I'm setting myself up for like, I have ADHD. So I'm setting myself up for success every single freaking morning. I have to, or I will be like, da 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 I just like, yeah. I, I can't. So I have a little, one, number one, I'm always time blocked. So like I always, the night before, I'm always scheduling my day, what it's going to look like tomorrow, my tasks next to it. Every task falls into a time block. Um, and in that side of those time blocks, I'm only focused on the tasks that align with it. So like if it's emails, I'm only doing emails in that time slot. And I will basically set a Pomodoro timer, which I have already talked about on this podcast before, but I'll set my Pomodoro timer, which literally you can just use on the internet for 
for free at Tomato Timer. And I set it for 25 minutes and I'm just maximum focus. I'll put the binaural beats on in my ears that help 40HZ helps with focus. I will, first thing that I do when I wake up in the morning is get light exposure. Since I wake up at 5 a.m., there's no sunlight yet, but it's really important to get light exposure as early as you can. I don't make this shit up. Andrew Huberman said so. So he, and he's really smart. And you need to reset your circadian rhythm. So you got to get exposure to sunlight. And I drink water and I take, I drink a lot of water when I first wake up in the morning, rehydrate my body, caffeine. I take some nootropics, which I, I'm not even going to get super into because I I just want to say like, I'm not, I'm not a doctor and I'm not going to give you medical advice. That's something that you can look into on your own, but I do take some nootropics, which are going to help with focus and output. I make sure that I get movement as soon as I can in the mornings, like movement as far as like exercise goes and get my heart rate up a little bit. Um, And then I, and I, I focus, like I, I focus hard just on what I'm doing and I, and I work through my time blocks. But one of the things that I'm able to do with that, so besides using my Pomodoro timer, which is huge, because the human brain can't really focus for long periods of time. Like people have told you, you can be a multitasker. That's remember that one time we put out a job posting or something like that. And Jackie wrote like, must be a good multitasker. You must be an excellent multitasker. And you're like, and I was like, take that off immediately. It's impossible for a human to multitask. You need to be able to task switch. But no, I really just want you to be able to focus on one task at a time and do it well and do it fast. Absolutely. Some people, I think, just really overthink and then they're like, well, where do I even start? And it's like, make a playbook for yourself. Like, what does your day-to-day look like? This this is Nikki's playbook. This is how she does life. In the morning, she wakes up at this time. She makes sure to get movement, light exposure, drink her water, you know, like she has a playbook. So I think in the past, I would have been like, that sounds absurd to me. Like, I am not that structured of a person. But look at what becomes possible (laughs) when you can do something like that, right? So uh, don't overthink it. Just like start somewhere, right? I'm not that structured of a person either. But the thing is, like, when you don't, people say that, like, I'm not a structured person. Like, I don't want to be all regimented like that. And then what ends up happening is they don't know where to start. And they completely overwhelm themselves. And then guess what happens? Absolutely effing nothing. Analysis paralysis, baby. Yeah, That's what exactly. happens. <laughs> so when you don't have a plan and you're not measuring, you, when people say things to me like, oh, I, I could never be that regimented or that disciplined. That doesn't sound like fun. And I'm like, OK, I'm not like this. I'm the exact opposite of that. I got kicked out of freaking nursery school for climbing on the walls or something. It's like I, I caught an entire line at at a fair when I was like three so that I could get on the horse and, and have a pony ride. Like that's that's the type of person I am. I'm impulsive and I'm, I'm searching for that dopamine 24 seven. You set yourself up for success and make things easier for yourself. So like I know that I need to wake up in the morning and have everything set for me. Like my computer is charged. My headphones are charged. My water is next to my bed, like ready to be drank. My supplements are right there. My clothes are set out for me already. My watch is charged. Like make it easy or it's not going to happen. That's the thing. And also you don't need to do like a huge overhaul overnight. You just start making little changes at a time. Otherwise it's not going to last. But what happens is people say, I'm not that kind of person. Like I don't want to be regimented. I'm I'm, I'm spontaneous. And I get that. Guess how much more time there is in my life for spontaneity now that I am regimented in my work. You are creating more time for yourself. As time goes on, you start to find tools that make what you do even faster. So for me, like that Pomodoro timer is awesome because we can't focus for long periods of time. So if I set the timer for 25 minutes, I set on my desktop tomato timer 25 minutes and then I get a five minute break. And in that five minute break, I mean, me, I do whatever I want. I usually like, I don't even know what the hell I do. So sometimes I go get more coffee. Sometimes I like just gaze into space. It's yeah, like, <laughs> sometimes I like just scroll on Instagram. Sometimes I like put mascara on for no reason or just like do my hair or clean my closet, like, or I'll do jumping jacks or I'll go say hi to the kids, like wh- whatever it is. Or you'll do a, maybe take a seven minute break and do a seven minute break slice strands row on your mannequin i i i can i work that into my work day okay (laughs) Okay, perfect (laughs) that's content creation even though it's fun for me and then the other and then another 25 and then five minute break 25 five minute break 25 15 minute break 
And in that fit, you know how much you can get done in a 15 minute break? A lot. A lot. So you have your tasks, you have the time block. If you don't finish everything you have to get done in that time block, you're, you're done. Trust me, you don't wait till the last day to get your tasks done. You just learn to prioritize them. So my first thing I tell everybody, I'm like, make a list of all the things that you want to get done for your business and in your life, both personal and and regular. So like a lot of people don't want to do it digitally. So you can write it down. And right now you can, I know you can't see me, but I use a note, I use a notebook and I'll, I use both. I use, cause I, I'm out of my mind. I time block both in a notebook and on the computer and I'll, I'll put my tasks down there. And then I sort of like put them into categories and just prioritize them. Right. So I know that I knew this week that I had eight emails to write, right. I had eight marketing emails to send out. And I was able to do that in a very short period of time. Now, I did that in 45 minutes yesterday, all eight emails. And let me tell you how. We use tools, right? So we have ChatGPT. Now, you can't just go throwing things into ChatGPT. It's going to come out corny as hell. It's gonna right? come, you, you're going to end up yelling at ChatGPT and getting into I keep saying GBT, no matter what I say GBT. GPT. I that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're going to get into a fight with it if you try to just chuck something in there. It needs to know you. It needs to get to know you. So you're going to have different areas of ChatGPT where it knows you in different ways. So like I have an area for the hair extensions line and I have an area for consulting business and I have an area for my personal TikTok so that it really understands my voice, what I do and the point that I'm trying to get out there. And I put my like branding information in there, like our brand mission and our vision. So for example, like we had that professionally done, but you can also ask ChatGPT what it needs to know about you and your brand to give you the best possible output. So it's really about using the right prompts. So I actually, and I will drop it, I will literally drop those prompts like right in the description here like, that you can use for ChatGPT. Like I created a document, just plug in your own stuff and you can use it in ChatGPT and it'll help you give you content ideas. Now at this point, I don't need it for content ideas because people tell me what they want to see by like asking me questions in the comments. So like, I know exactly what my audience really like needs and wants, but when you're sitting there like struggling with ideas for content, you tell ChatGPT exactly what you do. I am, let's use Jackie. I am a massage therapist that focuses on ethical massage. Oh wait, I am a massage therapist that teaches other massage therapists to focus on ethical massage. I do this because there's so much blah, 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 blah in the industry. The goal that I have with my posting is to give people the education they need on this, this, and this. What questions do you have, what clarifying questions do you have for me to be able to help me create content and email marketing? And then once it, it's gonna ask you questions, do you have any other clarifying questions? Do you have any other clarifying questions? Then basically it, it's gonna get to know you and understand you. And at that point, you can say, okay, well, I need like seven different content ideas that are going to be really engaging for my audience. And remember last week that we talked about, I don't know if it was last week or at the, whatever it was, but we talked about talking to one person, like solving one problem for one person. Once it understands that, it's going to be able to give you ideas of what that one person really needs to see and wants to hear. And from there, like you, you could say, okay, create me some really strong content hooks for this particular thing. Give me seven days worth of content ideas. Act as an expert marketer and give me five different email ideas to get new clients into my business. Um, what are some other ways? So like in those same threads, right, where you explain, hey, this is who I am. This is what I do. Here's my goal with my content. Um, can you give me th those ideas? Allowing it to know what you would like your brand voice to sound like, right? What's your innate kind of way of being because authentic marketing and branding is really important. You just want to make sure that it sounds like you and that you're coming across authentically. And guess what? You're still going to need to tweak it. People can tell when you take it directly from ChatGPT. It's a, it's a robot. Like it's still, no matter how good you are at prompting, it's going to make your life 10 times easier, but you still have work to do. What type of content do you, do you want to create with that? You know what I mean? So like, I can be like, okay, well, this, I have a masterclass coming up, right? So I have this, you, it knows what I do now. It knows my brand voice. It knows the benefits of Slice Strands. It knows the benefits of Slice Squad. Basically, I can say I have a webinar coming up. Um, it's a free webinar. This is what makes it so awesome. I need you to act as an email marketing expert 
and give me seven days worth of getting people to sign up. This is the link that they would sign up at. And it it's creates such a it, sleigh. Yeah. And then it <laughs> creates. And I said, ma- and I'll say, like, make sure that it sounds like me, like that. It's my brand voice. Now, then I'll go in and I definitely make a lot of tweaks because no matter how hard I try and how well it gets to know me, it doesn't sound exactly like me. Like it doesn't understand the fact that I say things like so freaking cool. Like it just can't. It, it, and it over it always like over. <laughs> It doesn't understand that I'm just the coolest person in the world. Our first voiceovers were very like bland and like boring and not fun at all. And then stepping into just being yourself is like really what brought the most following and exposure for you and same for me. And so knowing kind of your your real authentic personality and then relaying that to ChatGPT saying like, like my brand voice is for me, it's empathetic, sarcastic. Yeah, it's still the sarcasm. <laughs> Does it ever do this for you? Do you have sarcasm in your brand voice? Not sarcastic, but you know, I'm like audacious and bold. But then it'll. But then it's like it, when I tell it that I'm audacious and bold, and that like I I have a New York accent, and like that's how that's how I come off. Do you know what it does? It turns me into like Tony Danza. And I'm like, you need to relax. Not Tony Danza. It turns me, it, this is what it does in my email marketing campaigns. When I say sarcastic, it's like, and I'm going to hit you with a little bit of sarcasm today. I'm like, like you it, don't need to tell people no. that you're being sarcastic. <laughs> I'm like, and then I yell at it and I'm like, you really don't understand humor yet. Okay. You need I'm like, to let me be that. clear. Never as a sarcastic person and a hilarious human being, I would never say that. Ever. So it's not funny. It has never made me a funny joke whatsoever. No. I no. So I go in and I uh, I just give it the idea and it gives me like, it makes it like laid out better for me. And then I go in and I, I tweak it myself and I add my own personal touches into it. But either way, like I'm able to, my output is, you don't get that like brain block that you would normally get, you know? So right there, it's worth it alone. Then I have, of course, all like my video editing apps that help me. So I can film like a long form video, sort of like like this, what we're filming right now. And I can put it into something called Munch. And people are going to ask me like, how much does this cost? I don't freaking know. I have every subscription known to man because it's one of the things that I want to spend money on. I love technology, right? So like, a thousand percent, like you better, I have the, I have the paid subscription of, of, to everything. So Munch takes my long form videos and breaks them up into little short form videos with the cool captions and everything. And then I could just drop it in. It will make me, it'll make you like 10 short form videos. And they also need tweaking sometimes. Then you have another app that's called Capsule. It's another one that's called Capsule. And they're like, it's going to show you your video transcript. And you're able to just like take out words and it will take it out of the video for you. Kind of like on Vimeo. Too. Vimeo like, does that. Yeah. yeah. But these are more like you can sh- short form video. You can like make an introduction. So there's fun things. And that's one that I think will continue to grow capsule. So we have ChatGPT. And within ChatGPT, I have something that makes me documents. So I have the DocMaker plugin for that. So I can give it the information that I need, have it create a document for me and then go in and put in like my own branding and stuff like that and tweak it myself. But that's directly from ChatGPT. I have the link reader in there as well. So if I needed to read uh, information from a website, it can do that for me as well. Wow. Yeah. Um, Then what else, what other tools are really, really useful for me? There's even AI in Canva now. Have you used it yet? So Canva, yes. And it's insane. Yeah, it's really cool. And then you can also, what you can I have another app called Beautiful AI, and that creates my slideshows for me. Yes, I use that too. I plug my branding into there, and it creates slideshows for me. So then I can have ChatGPT come up with the slides for me and then input that information into Beautiful AI, and it comes out with, like, perfect branding. It's not always perfect. Listen, like, the branding is always on point. they tweaking, yeah. But you're not going to have to do nothing, but you're going to be able to make, like, I can create four, like, slideshows in a very short period of time, then I go in and I teach them with my own brand voice and and input my own stuff into there. But it saves me so much time where I would just be sitting there like stuck. 
Yep. You know what? I'm going to plug our free training that we collaborated on below because you made the slides on beautiful AI and then I taught the class and it's all about narrowing down your niche. So um, if you're in a service industry and you want the free training, we'll put that below as well. Yeah. Even if if you're a hairstylist too, it's because you really still should be narrowing down your niche as a hairstylist. And then that information, once you've narrowed it down, you can really plug that into ChatGPT. So this is one of the things that we also help our clients with. Then we have Trello. Oh, Trello Trello's is like, baby. that's how we do like our task management and stuff like that. It's an, inc- that's an incredible thing. I love it so much. Like I'm, I'm super, I'm, I'm into this stuff. This is what we do is like, this is efficiency. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. We're like, Hey, here's this tool and resource. That's going to literally slice your time. In half. Yeah. <laughs> like here, we created a, we created a virtual consultation form for your clients. Mm-hmm. Plug and play. I created yep. like, I, I created like, 40 social media templates that people that our clients like our hair clients can use are both our extensions clients and our hair clients and all they have to do is just like download the stuff and they can plug it into their own or or they could put in their own branding i created like all these different instagram poll ideas for our clients so that they can engage with their audience so basically what the what we are there for is to also turn you into a machine we're all aliens together here. No, but seriously, <laughs> what's really cool is that this allows you so much more time, so much more time. Like I'm t- at this point, like I've gotten so good with this stuff and I'm a CEO. I run three businesses, you guys, and they're big, they're big businesses. Like they're not big, like they're not Walmart big, but like they're, they're mid size. They're not even mid size. They're small, but I'm saying like there are, they're booming businesses. They're doing really, really well. Um, I think probably we, I was just telling Jackie, I think we're eligible for the fastest growing uh, privately held companies in America, which I'm going to do a little bit further research into, but I think we are, I did think we did reach eligibility for that. So I'm super excited about it. Feeling so popular, you're going to be popular. That's just the one thing that I haven't figured out yet is how not to make phone calls. Like I can't deal with businesses that are not digital at this point. So like oh. I, play, I play tennis now. So that that's what I was going to say. Like this frees up so much time for me. Like I can play tennis on a Tuesday morning because guess what? By literally 8 a.m. I've been up for three hours and I've gotten like the equivalent of 12 hours worth of work done. And don't you follow up your tennis playing with your weekly breathwork slash therapy session? Like an hour and 15 playing. minutes. So you ha- you get to do two things. That are like for for self help and leisure, right? On a Tuesday morning. Yeah, and it's taken a while for me to get here. Like I had to put in a shit ton of like ma- shit ton of work to get to the point where like I can do this. But you know, something that we instill in our team members too, and just like everybody in is like you can have both a really bustling and fulfilling career and free time. Like next week, so I'm like one of my main things this year is creating connections with people. And I signed up for the entrepreneurs organization and I'm really excited about it. So next week I get to on Tuesday, not only do I have my tennis game, but then I'm going to sit in and then I'm going out to a sales training and I get to connect with other entrepreneurs. It's on a Tuesday also. Yeah, but I'm, I switched my breath work next week. Okay. I'm like, damn, Tuesdays are no, Hey, take the Tuesday off. I'll be up at five. I'm going to do at least three hours of work, but it will be the equivalent of most people's 10 hours of work in those three hours. So basically it'll be fine. I remember when I first started working with you, you were like, I'm like, so because it was like a little less official in the very, very beginning of like, is this full time? Is it not? And you're like, or like, what's the time off policy? And you're like, I don't care. Get your work done. I don't care if you get it done in two hours or it takes you 80 hours a week. Just get it done, and uh, I, I'll teach you all the ways to get it done quicker, and then that's it. That's all I ask. <laughs> then take the time off because work-life balance is really important. We've recognized that within our within our team, like our team members too. We really try to express that as a as like a core value of our company. Like, yeah, like we give people a lot of autonomy. I don't not, I don't care when you work or how much. Like, we have unlimited time off, and so many people have tried to convince me not to have unlimited time off. I have had so many people tell me like, I don't, I don't think that you should have unlimited PTO for the people that work for you. And because people will take advantage of it. And I said, nobody does. Nobody does. It never gets taken advantage of. And if somebody, because 
they're still held responsible. Like you have KPIs and metrics that I want you to hit and that you should hit to hit your own goals, right? I don't really care if you work from France. I don't care if you take two weeks off. I care that one, that you're in a good headspace and two, that you hit your metrics. Like you're getting, you're getting your job done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like take, within the job description. Go on vacation. You don't have to raise your hand to ask me to go to the bathroom. You don't have to raise your hand to ask no. me to take a trip to Tokyo. Go. Yep. Go. You should. I want you to have a good life. And Paul, like our brother, who is a CEO as well, is like, you guys have really good like team retention. It's like, yeah, it's the autonomy, babe. Like we are, we don't yell at people either. Yeah, you're right. We should do a whole entire episode on leadership because it's so important. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. But yeah, we they we know, do have like, good not we do have good retention. Yeah. Um, we're not perfect, but that's the other thing. Like we'll show up. Like yesterday, I talked to somebody that works for us. Like really, just not as the best version of myself because I had like a, I had a long work day. So like I put in probably fourteen hours yesterday, and when I was finally going to sleep, I felt that like my boundaries were crossed by that person, by them like texting me, and, and we've hashed this out, texting me on my personal phone about something like work related that really wasn't urgent. And I got upset and I got a little sassy. And then I took a step back and I was like, listen, I know that I just got sassy with you. And the reason why I got sassy with you is because it, it is because this is why I had that reaction. So like, that's what I'm feeling. And I should not have reacted in that way. And in the future, I also need you to not do this. Yeah. We, we take accountability because no, nobody's ever perfect. Uh, but we learn, we take each opportunity um, possible to learn from some, you know, acting in a way that is uh, less than kind because our boundaries are crossed and we didn't maybe put strong ones in place in the first place. That's not someone else's problem. That's our, we should have put the boundaries there um, in the first place, but we learn and now you have. And we now do it's constant, not again. we do constant training on like, on inner work, not just for us, but our team. Like we're always like willing to adjust when we don't get things right. And um, you're not you're not going to get things right all the time. Not every so, time. Nobody yeah. is. This is life, but baby. Anyway, we'll have a whole other episode on yeah. leadership and just like learning how to have those types of conversations and creating a really incredible workspace. And I really want people to take that seriously because you're also a leader to yourself. Yes, you like, are. Like wh when you are when you have a business, like you have to act as your own leader in a way. Holding yourself accountable to hitting your KPIs and metrics that you set into place for your growth, right? I like to see people treating even being an employee as like, this is your own business too. Right. Like within ours, right? What are your oh, goals? I we're can't, doing it. we can't stop. Should we okay. just keep going on this path or should we go back to efficiency? No, we're going to go back to efficiency. <laughs> Next week okay. it's for leadership. So back to efficiency. I want to talk about like the starting off small thing because- I think it's actually like dry to drive that home even more is really important because especially like being someone with ADHD, I find that when I, so I hear sometimes, or like maybe earlier on, I would hear your routine and I'm like, I'm so overwhelmed that, and then like, I'm not good enough. I can't do that. Right. And then my brain goes into like shutdown mode. And I don't do, and you know, in the beginning, like I couldn't do any of it. I'm like, I just can't, I'm going to do it my way. And it, my way was never really that efficient because same thing. I'm not naturally regimented, uh, you know, all of, all of the things that you said, <laughs> not naturally patient, regimented. I have ADHD. Um, I resonate, right? We are sisters. We share DNA. We probably have a lot of similar traits about us. We know that. Very similar mental illnesses. We're aware yes, of that. Almost the same ones. Remember when Slightly you said that different in my wedding speech? <laughs> oh yeah, we even shared the same mental illnesses. And mom was like, ah, mom was like, don't tell people that? that you're mentally ill. One time mom told me not to say, so I was like experience I was having like a nervous breakdown and I had like come from Colorado back to New York, you know, that whole thing. And I mom was like, don't tell everybody that you're like mentally ill. It's kind of like that mentality, like it's embarrassing. Like the, and, the I, and I and I and I went like, directly outside. I'm not kidding. I really did this. I went directly outside in the front of the house and screamed, I just want everybody to know that I am mentally ill. I am having a mental breakdown. I am having a full menti B, okay? And I am not ashamed. 
Screaming she was like, the and then she would get upset when I would tell people that I have obsessive compulsive disorder. She was like, just say you have anxiety. And I was like, no, no, it's just what I do have. I'm, I'm like, I'm honest. just going to be very clear about what is actually transpiring up in here because uh, it's not good. And and it is good now. I mean, it's just like it's it's night and day. And yeah, if if I can make that turn around, really anybody can. I don't want anybody to hear this and get and overwhelm themselves and then not take the little actions because this took a while to get to the point where I am right now. Yes. So little things like creating small little habits are going to be more sustainable for you. And then you just add to add more of the good, right? Yeah. Start with, start with two. First one, I feel like the first step could be every night I set myself up for morning success. I put my K cup in the Keurig thing. I put my water next to my bed, my sunlight exposure thing in the right spot. Yep. So that could be the first step. It's like for one week, can you just do that? Just set yourself up for success at night, create that routine. Yeah, then you add on the morning stuff and then and then you keep going and going and building the Lego castle that Nikki now lives in. Yeah, you know, and I'm not always perfect. I get distracted, too, sometimes. And I, like there are times where I'm like, I got so distracted for the past hour. I just that was not. And, and normally, like our brains, especially if you are neurodivergent, you're searching for dopamine. So you're like, you know, it's easy for us to be like, ooh, shiny, exciting and get distracted by that. Um and the other thing that we'll do is like totally sabotage when we go, get off track, you know, like we'll be like, oh, well, I just totally F that up. So I guess I'm just not this kind of person. So I'm just going to, you know, I already screwed it up. I'm going to go quit all in on your worst day, people don't quit yeah. on your worst day. But instead, then... you just no judgment. Just say, hey, like, all right. like, I'll just go downstairs and be like, hey, so I just did nothing for the past hour. I don't know what happened back there, but here we are. Give yourself grace too. Yeah. Cause the more pressure you put on yourself with it, that yeah, the more likely you are to be because motivation fleets, right? Some days you're going to be like, I'm so inspired. I feel amazing. I feel like that today. I was, I woke up excited yesterday, real tough for me, real tough mentally for me. And I still got a lot of work done because of these um, resources and tools and routines. Yep. So did it feel amazing? No, it's not always going to feel amazing every single day. So the more you can just like give yourself that grace, like I'm, I'm just having a bad day. I'm going to do, uh, maybe I didn't get the whole routine, the whole playbook, play by play, but I'll try again tomorrow. I'm going to, I'm going to get in some of those tasks tomorrow and congratulate yourself. Give yourself some gratitude. Like what I did do was uh, I was honest with myself that I had a bad day. And I still got some of some of the things that I wanted to get done done. And that that could be like the mental talk you have with yourself. Like, I'm not going to quit right now because it's just a day. I'm just having a day. Yeah. And we also allow mental health days. We're like, please go, go take care take, of your mental health. Can't do anything when you're in a, that like a low, low mental space. Yeah, yeah exactly. A another thing that really helps me with my efficiency is scheduling like I'll batch create my content at times like that where I have it like blocked off and then I'll schedule it so that like it's already scheduled out. So you can use meta or like with TikTok and stuff like that. I will just put everything in my drafts. Then I'll go to YouTube. So this morning I scheduled like I scheduled out eight posts like YouTube shorts um, and I just put them like I scheduled them for specific days. Um, you know, I don't have to think about that. And then like I'll put my long form videos on unlisted until I'm ready to like I'll just like upload them and then put them out on unlisted until I'm really ready to tackle that. And then on Meta, you can uh, put all your reels and your stories and stuff like that. So you batch create it and then you put it in that way. Um, create folders on your Google Drive that have like your short form content ready to go. Your carousels ready to go. You set yourself up for success on Canva by having a template that you use for your carousels that you just plug and play with, right? Make a copy of it and use the same thing. Just change the verbiage. Now, you take your, let's say you created a video. Now take your words in the video. Is that a marketing email? Is that a Facebook post? Is that a, a thread or a tweet? Basically, you're just making your life easier in every capacity so that when four o'clock rolls around, like for me on Fridays, I take a half day. And for me during the Monday through Thursday, I work 5 a.m. to 4 p.m. Which, with some breaks, absolutely. And then guess whose computer shuts down? Now, listen, if I didn't have children and a wife, I would work 24-7. I love working. Me too. Every time Joe travels or something, um, like, I'm just... Dee, 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 dee. <laughs> yeah. It's so fun. Well, we love our job. 
Yeah. So that's really great. It is important too to spend spend time with people you love. But course. because I have children, I've seen a lot of movies where like the parents just don't show up for their sporting events and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, that's not me. Mom makes time for her kids, right? And I and I love spending time with my kids. I'm not trying to say that I don't. It's not out of obligation. Like I genuinely want to hang out with them and I want to hang out with my wife. So like uh, from four to seven, don't even don't come for me. But I don't feel I don't feel bad about that. That's what you have to do for yourself. I, and it took time for you to even get to that point. Do you remember? I feel like there were there were times where you're like, I'm just I'm constantly on 24 seven. And you were you straight up just were. And then it was like, oh, wait, I just can not do this instead. <laughs> and then set this boundary and say, hey, from four to seven, I'm with my family. Don't talk to me. And nobody does. Because it's a clear, strong boundary and it you're not needed from the hours of four to seven. It would be insane if you needed to be turned on at all times like that. Right. And and breath work definitely helped me with that too. You know, it definitely did. Like that is another area that like that's just another thing that I got out of doing breath work is just being able to set those boundaries and be present. So all of these things just end up being they're just they're just life changing. So I just want to like pay some of that forward. Now, the, a lot of the, these tools and these tricks are things that we pay forward to our our clients. Oh, and we schedule out all our emails in advance. Like it's just, you know, it, it's. We are we one operate, giant life hack. That's one giant. It. That's what I always say. Like it, this is one giant life hack and not for the purpose of being like, I want everybody to be a robot for the purpose of being like, hey, you don't even understand what's possible for you yet. And how like you have time. I want you to start optimizing it. I want you to start setting stronger boundaries in your life. I want you to start being more efficient. And I want you to have plenty of time to do things that reinvigorate you and spark your energy, like going and connecting with people and traveling to Denver for our in-person class. And <laughs> because, you like that plug. <laughs> no, because but they're as fun. creatives, like as creatives, we, you know, without that experiencing life, many people, um, they lose that creative nature because you're not experiencing life. When you experience life, right? How many more ideas? So come? many. Yeah. So. I remember, so my brother, who's also a CEO, I don't think he uses a lot of the, the tools that I use. I feel like- I don't think so. I, I feel like I could slice his timing in half. No offense, Paul. Uh, but anyway, like he actually said to me, the other day, he because he's like, and and you're teaching a breath work because I'm actually like I'm really excited. So something super outside of my comfort zone that I'm doing this week is I am going to like a spa sisters event at a cold and hot exposure wellness center, and I am going to do an intro to somatic breath work there, and I'm really excited about, it. and I'm going to put tinsel in people's hair and stuff like that. But I'm really excited about it. And Paul's like. Uh, how do you like he's like to... now you're doing this I was there on that FaceTime yeah. like how are you doing breath work and this and, and that I was and like, you're like I, I was like hey I, I'm like I, I just I'm actually good I'm yeah. like I, I I have plenty of time yeah I wear a lot of hats too like yeah. I've, I'm a massage therapist too people are like wait you also still have a private massage practice and teach yoga I'm like yeah <laughs> and I also I want people to know like I, that something that does happen is like when you're a creative, you'll be like, oh, every time you have like a passion or like something new and exciting that you think you want to turn it into a career and you stop focusing on like the thing. So you don't want to like stop focusing on the thing and go too broad too quickly because that will actually very much hinder you. Not everything that you're passionate about needs to be a career opportunity. Like just because I like playing tennis doesn't mean I need to be a tennis coach. And just because I like doing breath work doesn't mean that I need to be a breath work facilitator. I did that more because I love doing it. And like, I, I'm thinking like, how can I help other people like within my existing practice? But like, not everything that you feel strongly about, like that used to be a thing that I would do all the time. And it just like, and it just screwed me over so many times. Like, I'd be like, Ooh, you know what else I like doing? Makeup. I think I'm going to be a makeup artist. You yeah. know what else I like doing? I'm like, Ooh, you know what else? I love to cook. Should I go to culinary school? No, I, I resonate just, so hard with this. Just cook as a yeah. hobby. Like you don't need to be a chef because you like cooking. No. Focus on your thing like and you'll see that thing is going to grow and grow and grow and grow and you'll get to enjoy all the beautiful hobbies that you want and have a very full and multi-passionate Life. universe. Universe. Did you like Cute. that? Cute. 
It was cute. Oh, get over yourself. You see what Jackie. I mean? Do you see? <laughs> you said it, it, a lot of it is in delivery. So like when I, I said it in a very mean, sarcastic way in that moment, yeah. I did for sure. Cute. That's cute. different than saying like, oh my God, so cute. So I cute. love it. No, I just don't like it. Whatever, whatever. We won't get back into it. And I just, I want to say, like, just to drive home that point of like, you don't, as a creative, you don't need to turn everything into a career. It, it can backfire in so many ways. And here's one that I've experienced. I loved to do yoga. I still love to do yoga, but I loved to do yoga so much. I would do yoga every single day. And then I went and took a yoga teacher training and I hyper fixated on it being a career path. And I stopped practicing yoga because I didn't have the space for it anymore. So um, I love that I'm a yoga teacher, but also like that could have just been one of the things that I do is do yoga, but I had to go be a yoga teacher. I like it. I'm good at it, but you know, yeah, that it's sort just, of thing could happen. <laughs> yeah. And, and it does. Like I, I, I've done it so many times. Like I became like a, a, a certified like love coach at one point. Um, and, and like intimacy coach for what? Why couldn't I just be interested in it and not pour my entire heart and soul and try to turn it into a career? Now I just like have all that information living in my brain rent free. But like I it could be helpful. You know, maybe. There have been moments where I have made investments in things that, you know, I you know, I went to bartender school. I just You just be doing stuff. Focus on your one thing. One thing at a time. One thing at a time. And invite other things in as hobbies and loves and passions and not necessarily as a as a means to make money if later down the line it becomes that then let it but not everything that you're passionate about needs to be like the be all end all in the way that you make a living true water the grass where you are i want to drive that home water the grass where you are the grass is greener where you water it not on the other side because for a while i was even like well i don't want to i don't want to talk to hairdressers all the time like i want to talk to everybody and like, I would start like talking to everybody and I was like, wait, why am I doing that? Like, I have a good thing going. Why am I trying to like. Because your brain got bored for a second. Because I got bored. It was bored. like, new creative idea. I have an idea. Let me absolutely expand right away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Before we wrap it up, I want to remind you, we are going to put the link. If you are wanting to come to the class in Denver, we're going to drop the link to sign up for a discovery call there. Yes, you need to go on a call. We do not just allow anybody to come to these. I know that I've said it a million times. We don't just allow anybody into our community. No matter what capacity capacity you are coming into our community, you're going to be like interviewed in a sense. It needs to be a good fit for you and a good fit for us. And we always have so many different options depending on like where you're at in your business and where you're at in your life, different bundles and packages. And so we really want to understand where you are, if we're a good, if we're a good fit for you before we just like, I'm not just going to send you a link and let you sign up. It's not going to happen. No. Sorry, um, babes. Sorry, babes. It's not going to happen. It's a uh, whole, we'll it, put <laughs> we'll put that down. We'll put you wouldn't the, ask Harvard to just let you in, would you? Just give no, me the sign up not. link. The reach out to like the administration's office. Can you just give me a link to sign up instead? Like I don't want to get on. A, I don't want to interview like, for this. Hey, I'm, I'm good not for saying the tuition. <laughs> hey, I'm not I'm saying that tuition can just send me the link. I'm not saying that we're Harvard. I'm saying that it's important for the integrity of our business that we are selective with who we um, bring in. Like straight up, if we can't help you, we we can't help you right now. If your core values, like if you cannot respect our company's core values, maybe not a good match. Uh, you know, so there, there's just so much that goes into it. Plus our advisory team, they slay. They're really, really honest on like, this is actually what is going to be your best bet based off of everything you've just told me. So just allow people to help you and listen to you actively. The calls are cathartic, in my opinion. Anyway, you get to like really talk through like where you're at right now and where you're trying to go. It's fun. And it's oh, nice I, to be I love it too. Yeah, I love it. I, I think it's really important. And our whole team always comes from a place of like value first. Obviously, like I've instilled that into them. Like we come from a place of we want to empower people and collecting money is not like always in their best interest. So we want to make sure that it is. Otherwise, we're going to create more problems for you and for us down the line if it's not That's in alignment. Right. We've That's made right. that mistake before. We have, and we learned from it, and, and we're we from even it. more we selective to now. Learn from it, yeah. So we're not Harvard, but maybe we are a little bit in the world of uh, of I think of we are continuing education. I think we're yeah. pretty top tier. So, yeah. 
And we'll drop the free training, the free narrow down your niche training below for everybody, hairstylists. And the ChatGPT thing, since I said I was going to give that to you. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we've got three links going wow. down below. See you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you for listening to Slice Squad Spills. If you're enjoying the show, please subscribe, leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback is going to help us improve and attracts more listeners to the show. Please share with your fellow Time Slicers. And hey, if you're ready to optimize your time and double your income, we've got you covered. 